Right, this talk's going to be about the uh, dispensation of grace, dispensationalism. Um, you may have come across this term, uh, semi-dispensationalist, and um, I'm going to keep it very simple. And I'm going to, what I'm sharing is, um, I, I invite people to examine what the Holy Word says, not what necessarily what I say, to to test what I say because I could be an error, so I'm going to share simply and faithfully um, what I've learned from, from the Holy Word and from the Lord and the Holy Spirit and um, what the, the Holy Scriptures teach, simply as it's laid down. So I'm going to put some basic uh, milestones to help anybody understand what this term dispensation so we're looking at this is what the word of God teaches it teaches dispensation of grace to grace through faith it's grace is in the uh, John chapter 1 in the beginning was the word the word was with God and the word was God and God created all things and uh, there wasn't anything that God didn't create so he creates the earth by grace and and gives us the earth and and then we have the the fall we have the fall of man through sin and then the the, the loss of grace uh, the man, man uh, falling away from grace and uh, grace is uh, eternal so it's grace to grace and because of the fall uh, of mankind and the ascension, the uh, the advent of our Lord Jesus Christ dispensed from grace, being grace, the death, burial and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God who, who, who was sent from God, who came down from heaven, took up the flesh, willingly laid his, his life down gave himself up as a sin offering to appease the judgment of a holy righteous God and then by the power of his his father by the power of the Holy Spirit and by the power that the father had given him through grace in the beginning he was able to take his life up back to grace and that leaves us faith faith is a gift because of grace and you need to um, you can only put that faith in that grace and that grace and truth came by Jesus Christ alone and he has left a plan he has left um, we have a record of the prophets of the grace unfolding through through the people in the scriptures through the chosen seed of, of Israel uh, the Lord called Abraham and, and Abraham gave birth to Israel and then from Israel we had the, the promises of God to, of, of the Messiah to come and the promised land and, the, and, and, and God's kingdom to come on the earth and the prophecy were unfolded through all the Old Testament prophets and it, it was rolled out and then, we, then, then, the, then the Lord gave the his people the law and the law pointed the way so great the law came by grace and the law was to prepare the way for grace to come and then you know uh, the new and everlasting covenant and uh, so the Lord gave the, gave the old covenant to, to his people to keep them in the way to keep them in the way of grace grace to grace and um, it, it was like uh, it's it's described as a schoolmaster so it kept Israel the law kept Israel and all the sins kept them on a straight course without that law that Israel would have wouldn't have had no rule to go by they'd have had no standard they would have been going all over the all over the wilderness but they had they had that rule to keep them in the way and when the way did come, they, you know, it's found that they were way, way out of the way, and they rejected the way and remained in their in their sins and and perished and uh, just like they had through 
that the unbelieving had throughout the Old Testament, um, even in Moses' time, uh, they, they, uh, the, the wicked Israelites refused to look at the, uh, the, the brass serpent that Moses held up and they perished, so it was a type of things to come. And it happened again when, uh, you know, for them to enter the promised land, they, you know, they had to be true to the Lord, they had to be faithful, otherwise they couldn't enter. And it's the same when Christ come, they had to, they had to be true, otherwise they wouldn't enter into the, the promised kingdom to come. And that king, king came with his kingdom and the promise of the kingdom to come, the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God, the kingdom of uh, heaven on earth. And the Lord triumphed in that kingdom on the cross and, and he will establish that kingdom by, by grace and through what he's completed on the cross. So I'm going to look at uh, just some basic milestones in dispensation in the dispensation of grace and, and show you that, that how there's many dispensations it's broken down in, into various dis, dispensations so um, uh, dispensational segments so I'm going to look at the key the just the key uh, divisions really and I'm going to do that with a, a blank piece of paper so I have let's let me get on the floor. Excuse the shadow. Uh, right, okay. So we have a piece of paper. So we've got the centre meridian. Let's call that the meridian of time. So that's the uh, where where our saviour come. So I'm gonna let's, let's do a lifted up. So the Lord was lifted up in the way. Right. And then I'm gonna do so that, let me see so if you can see that um, that point there, that cross. So that's the Saviour's um, crucifixion, that's his completion. Uh, and I'm going to draw this, the way. So, so remember the way was lifted up from the way. <laughs> but here's the way. Right, so there's the, that's the way. So here's the dispensational line of grace, and here's the saviour of the grace. So I've put the cross on above above the line. Um, right, so we have two divisions. So we we know in the scriptures we had the uh, the Garden of Eden, and we had the fall. Then we had the uh, wicked rebellion of of mankind and 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 the unfolding of sin and iniquity and it's all its all the avenues it sought. And then we know we had the Tower of Babel and then the the falling and the Lord breaking up all the nations into what because they just wanted to be one mass of one culture and then and then you'd have you'd have the few people who would want to be rulers and kings over it. So the Lord put an end to that, and then, then there was like um, all sorts of perversions going on, and uh, uh, we know that uh, that the seed was polluted, and there was like a mixing of angels uh, with uh, human blood, and there was hybrids, and uh, all sorts of recorded in the scriptures in the days of Noah. It got so perverse and ripe in wickedness. That there's only eight persons that were faithful to the the original word that was was revealed through the chosen people that we have a record that, that was Moses wrote about in the holy scriptures and so we've got the we've got the prophets so we've got the dispensations and I'll mark them out so you can see them clearly and I'll just draw a few. This is not an accurate, this is just a, a rough way of explaining what the scriptures show. So, as you can see, we've got, and they're, and they're paralleled, okay? They're, they're, I'm going to read the scripture in, from Hosea 
just to wet people's appetites, what I'm talking about. What's this man uh, ranting about? Um, right, uh, the book of Jose. I think it, I'm not sure what chapter it is, but it won't take me long to find it. Um, I hope. Okay, it's chap it's Jose chapter twelve, verse ten. And this is the Lord speaking through his mouthpiece, Jose. I have also spoken by the prophets, and I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. So let's put that down on the paper. So uh, let's read again. So by the prophets, I have also spoken by the prophets, and I have multiplied visions, un unfolded visions, time and time and time again, and used similitudes. Similitudes are like things that are, are similar in pattern and uh, describe something uh, that is uh, with a, a similar analogy. By the ministry of the prophets, so the Lord spoke through his prophets. So. Let's put Eden here. Eden. Then let's have the fall and the flood. So we have Eden. We have the fall. And then we have the flood in that dispensation. Um, I'm running out of room here, so um, right, and then we have the prophets. So we have Abraham, and then we we'll start with the patriarch. So uh, let's. I'll get all the orders mixed up. So let's put uh, Noah. So Noah and and eight persons were were only the only people. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to do anyone as a spike. So. They're the only people that stayed up true to the word. So that let's have them representing the eight persons and and then um I did a real bad arc. So that's the arc and then you know, the, the, they landed here and re established and then later would have come the law and the prophet. So let's let's mark down um the pro let's do uh we we'll do Moses there. And the Lord revealed things to Moses. And then we have the, um, like I say, I'm not putting these in any order. And then we have uh, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And then we have all the 12 sons. And then we have um, Isaiah. We have Isaiah and then we have uh, Elisha, Elisha. Then we have Jeremiah and then we have Ezekiel. All, all the way up, so you see the dispensations unfolding. So that there would have been the law, uh, the prophets, all the prophets, and the Lord. In every book, the Lord's revealing prophecy. So prophecy um, always covers all the way through, from grace to grace. Now. Now Isaiah, for instance, he might he might cover all these points, and then uh, let's say we have one of the little prophets like um, Joel. He may not. He may only cover uh, certain points in in the dispensation, but most of the prophets are always something in their own time, and then it and then the Lord speaks through to the end times and it goes into from eternity to eternity so prophecy is always from the Lord because the Lord is grace so wherever in the in 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 the time unfolding in the similitudes the Lord is always prophesying the whole plan and then we have the book of revelation at the end so we have um Let's do the. Let's get to the time of uh, the Lord. So let's put the, the the crucifixion there. 
and then so we've had the uh, flood that's all closed door now let's put a door there so that's shut and um, we know the Lord's not going to flood the earth again but he said in the last day he's going to burn it with fire so this is the seven year tribulation of Israel, this is Jacob's trouble, this is the wine press, this is the judgment of the Lord. And they're unlike, unlike, um, like Noah, eight persons, there'll be a small remnant in that time that will be saved. And they will, they will escape that wine press, only that little band of people and and anyone who is not from the tribe of uh, Israel um, will lose their life they will not have that hedge of protection like that little flock that little flock of sheep in the, the time of Jacob's trouble and the only thing that, that will get them through that fire and which is the Lord allowing draw he's removing his grace from the earth and he's going to allow all the wickedness to come out the bottomless pit he's going to take the break off the whole world's going to be overtaken by satan and it's going to destroy itself and and satan is going to hedge up around it's all going to be around israel now israel's a nation and a body of people so it's all going to be centered around that people and the whole world's going to be out to get that little nation because they would have um, possibly separated themselves from the rest of the world they might have repented at this point and uh, dogged everyone in and the whole world's fall falling against themselves maybe Israel will realize who their enemies are and call them out on the world stage and make it and allow everyone to know um, but anyway, it's only that that little period mirrors the flood. The, the Lord flooded the earth after the fall. And then let's have the Eden there. So, and then the cherubim was uh, put there to block the way, you see. To stop, uh, stop people getting um, eternal life in sin which is death so we had to wait to the saviour to come who who is the life giver so we have john let's have another prophet john the baptist so he announced the way and he opened the gate into the dispensation so after the prophets and we have malachi as the last prophet so let's put malachi here I'm sorry this is not very tidy. Malachi. End of the prophets. So for a long time there was a dearth of any revelation, of any any the Lord calling a prophet. So there was a, a silence in in Israel. And Israel were just going about their own business and getting going astray. And some were, were staying faithful in, in anticipation to their saviour. It was like, you know, business as usual. And so Malachi was ended. And then come John the Baptist. And he would have opened the gate to announce the Lord who would come through the gates later on. I draw, I draw the Lord as a, a whole and uh, the Lord's ministry would have started. So John was the uh, after the prophets. He announced the Saviour, like Elisha and Elijah, um, preparing the way of salvation. And as like uh, Elijah, and then uh, Elisha got ten times times the uh, grace of uh, what um, Eli Elijah had which was incredible so it's a type of 
John the Baptist announcing uh, the, great, the fullness of grace to enter into the promised season of uh, Jerusalem. So this is Jerusalem, it all cent centres around Israel. And, and that, so the, uh, that was another, a new dispensation. So we had, we, we would have had the uh, Garden of Eden, the fall, the Lord, uh, gracefully teaching, unfolding his will, then, then we then would have had uh, unfolding his law, so calling Abraham, and then we'd have had Moses, and then we'd have had the deliverance of the children of Israel, um, and, all, and, all, and it would have all unfolded, and the Lord would have left a, a faithful record that all pointed to the same thing, there'd be a pattern, a similitude all along the way, and every prophet would give a di uh, an account and there'll be different prophecies about this point and this point and this point in all the books and you can lay all the books out over the same prophecy which is this, the dispens which is the dispensation of grace so that's a helpful way to exegete the scriptures because it, the, it it's laid down and, and the places of mark so we have uh, the death, burial and resurrection. Then we would have had Pentecost, you see. So, and then we're going, we're going past now the meridian of time. Uh, and we're still, you know, in, 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 when you're in that point in history, we're looking that way for the Messiah. This point in history, we're looking back to the cross because it's completed. So it's a... Uh, the polarity has changed, you know, the dispensation is the old into the new and, you know, they're looking for the Lord to come and now the Lord has come, we're looking back at the completedness of of he who was grace, grace and the grace to come again, you see, because he's true, so we would have had Pentecost and the gift of the Holy Ghost, so and opening out to the period of grace. This is the period of grace. And then that one day will end. There'll be the door will shut, like the door was shut on the, the flood. And then the Lord's going to open up the door for fire. But he won't do that while the Holy Ghost is filled, all the believers in Christ. That can't happen and, until the Holy Ghost removes himself and the Holy Ghost fills the body of Christ. So we're in this dispensation of grace to the Jew and the Gentile. It would be the same in that period, but it would be slightly different because the the Lord's attention is now focused on restoring Israel. Judgment has come to the Gentile, the Jew and the Gentile. Anyone that's rejected grace is going to go into judgment, and that time is upon us. So you need to be on the ark, and the ark today is Christ. It's a spiritual ark. It's to be born again. It's to be born into heavenly places through the grace and merit of the completed work of Christ on the cross and his death, burial and resurrection, his ascension, his resurrection, his faithful promise and his promise of the Holy Spirit, his promise of his faithful word to come. Now his, his, his word, his final appearing is on the Mount of Olives when 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 Israel realizes that who because of the Antichrist is going to come up from the bottomless pit and he's going to deceive and 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 Israel are going to be looking for their Messiah expecting this imposter this false shepherd this idol shepherd that's coming they 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 they're, they're confusing it with the shepherd that is already. And he's the same shepherd to uh, Israel's fathers, you see. He's the same shepherd as he always was, as he's always been. And But they rejected him so that they're going to suffer the judgment. The seed and those who practice 
unbelief are going to realise that the that they because the ant the Lord sends the Antichrist and the fulfilment of prophecy all the prophecies of the last days this is the last days this is the great and dreadful day of the Lord here that's the actual arrival of the Lord to rescue Israel as 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 he puts his foot down and you know he's the only hope and and, and they're only going to be delivered and saved at that point now they might there might be a, a, a group of a, a seed in Israel that that um, are not going to believe the Antichrist and they're going to be already waiting for the Savior but that isn't they're not Israel as a nation is not going to be saved until the Lord puts his second envoy and he's going to come with all the saints he's going to so at this point these uh, the church is going to be in heavenly places with Christ because that's where they are that's where their spirits are so in a blink they're going to be with the Lord they're going to be snatched in a blink from the earth and then this is going to open the door and then we're going to have the two witnesses we're going to have the two you know the uh, the two prophets uh, witnessing against all the world in Israel and, and the prophecy and testifying of their the, the prophecy that their, their testimonies that the Lord's going to give them for Israel at that time and the rest of the world is just going to be overtaken by this uh, beast system this, the devil and all the uh, machinations going on that are in place today that are they just haven't raised their ugly head yet but they're they're working they're in force the pieces are the the kindling's being stacked the uh, pieces are being um, you know initiated and put into place and the you, that this is like the, this is going to be the, like the valley of indecision for Israel and, and all the world, and uh, the Lord's going to gather the whole world around Israel. So that, that's another dispensation. That is the dispensation of Jacob's trouble. We've got the dispensation of grace. We've got the Lord's ministry. Then we've got the dispensation of the prophets and the law. Then we've got so it's simple and it's all marked in the scriptures you don't need to take my word for it you can lay out the pieces because the Lord has said of multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets now Christ was a prophet Paul was a prophet Timothy was a prophet Titus was a prophet any believer in Jesus Christ has a prophecy of Jesus Christ they have a testimony of his word his established word when a believer believes in the Lord Jesus Christ they receive his word the fullness of his word they may not comprehend it or understand it but by that grace they are completed by it and this is what the, this is the word I've received so if I'm in error I I would hate to think I'd be teaching any others in error so I can only say I believe this is a faithful report of the word I've received and I invite you to uh, check out what actually the what words you've received and what what you've put your faith in have you put your faith in the word or have you put your faith in someone else's word because my word my, my heavenly father my saviour has taught me this it's simple it's a straight and narrow straight straight is the uh, you know narrow is the way broad broad is the road to destruction there's a broad look here that's the broad wrong wrong that's the only right way and that's laid down quite simply let me show you I'm just gonna disrupt all these uh, ball bearings little bird and uh, it's all laid out in the books we have revelation this is the Lord's revelation this is the whole word the whole revelation of that dispensation 
And that revelation is a revelation of this dispensation and these dispensations because he was in the beginning. He gave the word, he authored the word, he sent ahead of his word, he came and was faithful to his word and then he was faithful to those he promised to save and deliver and then he was faithful about his judgments because he cannot deny himself and then he was faithful to come in the last dispensation which is the day of the Lord it's the beginning of the eternal dispensation of, of the millennium of the millennial reign of the Lord on earth where um, he's going to he's going to rule all the nations with a rod of iron and all Israel and everyone's going to go have to go up and worship the Lord every year and um and then people that are born in that time will will either choose the Lord or they will reject the Lord and they have an opportunity you know even when the Lord's on the earth people will still sin there'll still be sin there'll still be uh uh uh, the, the battle of Gog and Magog, you know, Satan's going to raise his head up a se second time and the Lord's going to finally put him down. But that's the millennial reign, so that's the final dispensation on the earth uh, and then beyond into eternity. So that's basically the dispensation, that's what dispensationalism is, that's what dispensationalism is. And it's only one dispensation, but there's many parts to that dispensation. Um, so I hope that, that is uh, simple and edifying and that helps somebody to um, divide the word and to uh, examine what's being taught by um, other people who profess to have the word or profess to teach the word or protect profess to believe in the word and um, because you don't know until you receive the word your, yourself and then you're able to uh, measure the word and divide the word so with with um with the word with the lord um we have a you have a perspective if if you if you're reading from the Old Testament, you know that the Lord hasn't arrived yet, so you, you're looking in that perspective. When you look at the Lord's ministry period here, you know the Lord was on the earth and he's performing miracles because the Lord, the groom was here, so he was able to do miracles. And then he, he went away, he left the uh, apostles the ability to prof continue with with the uh, the ability to do those miracles, but they couldn't do those miracles like the Lord did. They only held the ability to do those miracles to for the glory of the gospel, but not it didn't continue. It died out with the apostles. So it, that was the establishing of of the grooms ministry was when the apostles died that was like the closing of and the, the sealing of the rock of the foundation the setting of the foundation for the the period of grace which has always been grace and faith through grace or um, faith in jesus christ to receive his grace and that's the period we're in today, and, and that's on offer for Jew and Gentile. Um, but if you believe, if you're not there, if you're not on there, you will go into that period of judgment. And you'll be one of the people who say, well, Lord, I, you know, didn't we do mighty miracles, didn't we do lots of good works? And the Lord say, well, I never knew you. You didn't, you didn't appropriate my atonement. I don't know you. I can't know you. I'm sorry. And he won't say, I'm sorry. It, that would be, that would just be it, black and white. You didn't believe. You didn't trust him. You didn't receive. 
so therefore you didn't know. So many people, for some reason, believe that um, we're to endure through this period. And when you, when you exegete the scriptures and study it, that period, that that period, it, it, there's no born again Christians in it. There's no mention of any any grace. It, it, it's <laughs> it's judgment. It's not very nice. It, it's the wine press, and it's the Lord removing His grace, removing, drawing back His grace, to exercise His judgment on those who rejected Him. That would be the Jews, Israel, and that will be the rest of the world. And the Lord's mercy will be extended, but only only to those who didn't know any different. So the Lord is merciful, but there be people where, I'll read you a scripture, there be people who will be too late, you know, and they will accept the mark, they'll be deceived, and, and they will be carry on in their wickedness, and they will be judged. The wicked will judge the wicked. Like, um, as an Old Testament prophet, it was astounded that the Lord used wickedness. He, he allowed wicked men to come and do the, 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 the judgments of the Lord, the righteous judgments. He would use, allow a wicked nation to come and judge his wicked house. He'd say, right, if you're merciful, I'll, I'll, I'll forgive you, but if you don't, I'll let, I'll let that, that, that next door neighbour come in and beat you up and take over your house and you'll, you'll be... Um, cleaning and cooking for him and I'm doing his ironing and that that's kind of like how the Lord judges people that's how the Lord judges the world he used the consequences of one wickedness to judge and, and meet the consequences of another and this is the final judgment to come in the dispensation of uh, Jacob's trouble uh, I forgot the scripture I was going to read. Joel 3. Uh, right, this is Joel 3. This is talking of this time. Uh, the consequences of, of what happened to Israel. What, you know, what befell them. And uh, the Lord says, Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, and all the coasts of Palestine? Will ye render me a recompense? And if you recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? Right, that's what the Lord's going to do to these um, Muslim nations for persecuting Israel. You know, no, even if they say sorry, it'd be, uh, in this point, if, if, if they say sorry today and they rep individually repent, because all these nations, all these wicked Palestinian Arab nations are under judgment, and the Lord's going to punish them but the Lord's outstretched at the moment he's merciful but when it comes to this time and and that those nations say oh look we're sorry we were wicked to Israel we're sorry we were deliberately continually wicked to Israel um the Lord's gonna say and they go the Lord's gonna go tough you know you know what you can do of your recompense you can know what you can do of your offering you you've had it Right, and that's the point of that dispensation. The church is not going through that because that the church is it's holy, it's pure, it's saved, and the Lord's removing it to allow the wickedness to come up from the bottomless pit and judge all the wicked that are not saved, that are not on the ark. That is simply what my Bible teaches, and um, I don't understand how um, people contend for the faith and say that we are going through that period. And, and then actually um, accuse people of, you, you know, uh, being biased in their scripture studies, not, not, you know, not fearing the Lord, not going to the Lord and asking Him, well, what does the Bible teach? Because they presume that they, that's exactly what is. There's, there's a bit of self righteousness in in this, in in the attitude where uh, people who believe in the rapture are wrong or they're deceived. It's a Jesuit doctrine. Well, I. I you know, I started with a clean sheet. It's a biblical doctrine. It's what I've studied out. It's what I've put my heart and trust in the Lord. I've lent on the Lord's understanding, not my own. 
and not this a person's opinion or that a person's opinion. This is what I've come to in faith and, and by study and by prayer and by belief, by believing the Lord's not going to lie to me because he's faithful, he's taught me everything else, he's got me thus far. Why is he going to start lying to me now? No, because he's true and faithful. So if, you, if you're wondering about the rapture, about anything, you know, you trust the Lord, you trust the Holy Bible, do, do not listen to what other brothers or sisters teach you. You know, listen to uh, what the, the Holy Spirit and the Lord teaches you. And, uh, you know, uh, trust in him to uh, unfold his understanding to your heart and your mind. So you know what dispensation you're in, you know what dispensation you're not going to be in. And uh, the Lord will answer you faithfully as he's answered me. So you can debate this. You could, you, uh, you know, you could correct me, but I've accepted those corrections. I've examined those correct that when people have, I correct myself. I judge myself. I don't want to be in error. Therefore, I don't want to teach anyone else error. I want to be faithful to what the Word teaches. Therefore, I want to teach faithfully what I've been taught. Why would I lie? I w would not want to lie. So if I am in error. I will have to repent and, and put that error right, right um, correct that error one day and apologise. So I'm not doing this uh, lightly, I'm doing this in fear, being certain of myself, certain in, in my faith, certain in the trust I have in the Holy Scriptures. So I hope that's been a blessing to someone. And I invite anyone to study that out. Um, and I'll close it in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen.